Hi, this is Gary again. In this video, I'm going to try something new. I want to reverse specific snippets of malware to show you in practice how various malware do things and how it looks like when you're reversing it. I call these snippets because I will not go into details about the rest of the malware. I wanted to do it this way to be able to create quick and short tutorials that can be useful without the full context. So let me know in the comments whether you like this format or not. So today I will work with a malware called BRBot, which I'm not sure whether it's a real malware or was created for educational purposes only, but it is a good example. And the function that we are going to look at is how malware extracts data from a file's resource section. Many malware use the PE executables resource section to carry additional data, such as payloads, config files, or whatever. What we are going to look at is not really rocket science, but the goal is that if you understand once exactly what's happening, then you will recognize it later in other samples. All right, so let's go first to IDA. If you're looking at the important functions window, then we will see that there are some functions that do something with resources, such as the find resource A. So let's double click that, and that's going to take us to the code where it's going to be used. So we are going to go through this function to understand what really happens here. The resource section is part of a PE executable, and as I said, malware usually use it to try to hide data there that will be extracted during execution. If you open the binary in a tool like PE view, then we can see that there is a resource section and there is something there called config, and the ID is 65 hex. But when we try to open it, then it doesn't really work. It happens, so let's get back to IDA. So let's start from the beginning. The function starts with calling the get module handle A with the LP module name zero. If you Google this function, you will see that when this parameter is null, then the function returns the handle to the current process. So this is how we are getting a handle to our own process. The red branches lead to the error state. So that's not too interesting for us. But now we have a handle, so the next step is that the malware is looking for a specific resource with the find resource A function. The resource type is going to be config, which is a good hint that this might be some kind of configuration. And the ID is 65 hex. This is exactly what we saw in PE view. Find resource A is going to return a new handle to this specific resource. The next step is that we call the size of resource function. I don't really understand why this is done here, because the code doesn't store the return value and it's going to be overwritten once the load resource is called. If you know why the size of resource called here, just let me know in a comment. Now if you read the manual of load resource, then you will see that we get another handle to the contents of the resource. So at this point we have a handle to the process, then we have a handle to the specific resource and then we have a handle to the content of that resource. Now finally, by calling the lock resource, we will have a pointer to the actual content of that resource. So this whole thing up to now was to get this pointer. But the real question now is, what we do with that pointer? First we are going to zero out ECX with XOR, then we save the address of the resource content into the LP buffer variable. And then we check whether it's null or not. As you can see, the next function is going to be called the create file A, which will, crazy as it sounds, but create a new file called brbconfig.tmp. We could check its parameters, but they are not really interesting. Of course, it checks whether the file creation was successful by comparing the return value to 0x8fs. If you look into the documentation of the function, then you will see that it's going to return an invalid handle value constant if the file creation failed. In IDA, we can right click on the value and choose the use standard symbolic constant option, and then we can look up the expected constant here. This way we will see the constant instead of the value. In the last block, we see two things. First, it's going to check the size of the resource content, which makes sense at this point because 
after that it's going to be written to a file and since we only have the pointer to the beginning we need to know the size of the resource to be able to know how much we need to read and write. For the write file function there is the lp buffer variable where we store the pointer to the beginning of the resource content and the return value of the size of resource is immediately pushed onto the stack to be used as the number of bytes to write parameter to the write file. After this, the only thing that is done is that we close the file. Here we can also see all the error handling branches, but that's not really interesting for us. So this is a pretty easy function. It opened a resource and wrote its contents into a file. I will quickly execute it in a debugger so that you see what happens exactly. First we'll navigate back to our function just to get the memory address. And here are we, and there is the memory address, and we're going to use that in our debugger. So open the debugger and navigate to that memory address. All right, and I will put a breakpoint there. And now let's execute. We hit our breakpoint and we are now in the function that we were analyzing. So we'll go through each line and see how everything is executed. So let's start hitting step over and execute our code. Here is the handle for the resource. Now we have the handle for the contents. And we finally get the address of the content, which is the same as the handle address. Here we create the file. And we write the contents to the file. We can open up the file now to see what's in it. So let's use a hex editor. As you can see, it's not really useful. It's probably encrypted, but that's going to be another story to recover the contents of this file. So that's pretty much it. I hope that now that you saw how this happens in assembly, you will be able to recognize this pattern easier when you're reversing. If you like this video, then subscribe to the channel because I'm planning to do more of these. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy hacking.